Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're gonna to take a look at a prototype of Tank Clash from Amoeba Games. Now this is a casual, easy to learn, fast playing, World War II tank to tank combat game. Let's take a look at some gameplay and then I'm gonna offer up some impressions. What we're looking at right now is a standard map setup for a standard game of Tank Clash. Now there's some variations on gameplay that we'll talk about in a little bit, but this is what it would look like at the start of a standard game. Now before we jump into the action, there's a couple things we probably want to do as an overview. One is to take a talk a little bit about the game board and the pieces, and the second thing is to talk a little bit about the cards. Let's start with the game board and the pieces. What we're looking at right now is a battle right at the start. Now this is U.S. versus German. We have the U.S. forces on the right side of the map and the German forces occupying their terrain on the left side of the map. The dividing line is right down here in the middle. Let's talk a little bit about the terrain and the map. We've got a, ver a number of different kind of terrain features. Clear terrain doesn't impede movement or line of sight. We have some buildings here. These block line of sight and you can't move into them. And we have forests. Now these forests here, you tanks can move into them, but it, and they offer concealment. In order to be able to hit a tank or to fire at a tank that's in a forest, you have to be two hexes away at most. So you can be adjacent to it or two hexes away, but if you're farther away from that, and these tanks do have range, then you can't fire at a unit in a forest. A unit in a forest, however, can fire out of its defensive position. Also, movement capacity is reduced to one square per turn if you're in a forest. Let's take a look at our last terrain feature by scanning a little bit to the left here, we have river. River basically uh, does not impede line of sight, but you can't move into it. And so the only way to get across here is at this bridge. Now, as we're looking at the German side here, there's one other terrain feature, uh, terrain feature kind of that we really should probably talk about, which are these uh, checkpoints and hexes. Now, as you start the game, you alternate kind of placing down forces in these checkpoints. This last one, which is placed in the last row, is your base. If in the default version of the game, if the enemy takes the base, it's game over. So this is an automatic win if the US forces were able to capture this base and you capture it by moving on to it. These two other ones are called checkpoints and the checkpoints basically allow you to move into here as a defender and to, re, um, to replenish your armor and to recover some of the, not replenish your armor, but recover some of the damage that you've got. And they offer some benefits if the enemy can take them. We'll talk a little bit about what those are going forward. Now. That takes care basically a roughness of the terrain. Let's take a look at the units and their capacities. So if we look at this, we can see that there are five tanks for every side. We've got three medium tanks here for the Germans, one tank destroyer, a martyr, and then one tiger, a heavy tank. And the forces are exactly parallel. So we have the exact same thing for the US. Three Shermans right here, a heavy tank, a Pershing, and then a Hellcat here for a tank destroyer. And these are symmetrical. Let's take a look at some of the features of these tanks. So on the right side, we can see the characteristics of the US tanks. On the left side, the characteristics of the German tanks. The US heavy tank is a Pershing. The German heavy tank is a Tiger. And we can see here that this is a firepower of three. Firepower equals how many dice you throw and how what the range is. Armor is its defensive value of this tank, and then the speed is two. So good firepower, good range, good armor, but it's slow. The Hellcat, which is a tank destroyer, can throw four dice, a firepower of four. Notice it matches up exactly with the Martyr, just as the Tiger matches up with the Pershing. The Hellcat, however, only has an armor of one. It is fast with a speed of three. And then each side has three medium tanks. For the Germans, their Panzer IVs. For the US, their Shermans. Firepower of two, so you're throwing two dice. Armor of two, but good mobility in a range of three. So again, we have symmetrical forces, which makes for a balanced game. And one of the things the designer wants to mention as we get into this point is the idea that this isn't designed as an accurate simulation of World War II tank combat. It's a simplified version for playability's sake and to introduce people to the idea of wargaming and to make it casual, easy to learn, and fast playing. So as we look at the starting setup here, we can see that the Germans have these, their medium tanks set up to the rear of their formation. They have their tank destroyer poised right here in these woods. This is with a range of four, hopefully covering some of this arc here. And then the Tiger over here. One of the other characteristics about combat are these ace figures. So we can see each side gets to designate one tank as its ace, and this gives it an extra plus one to all its dice rolls. So if you roll a four, it's gonna be a five. Now we've German, uh, designated the German Tiger as its ace to give it a little bit more firepower. And over here, we've designated the US Sherman back here as the ace for the US. 
Now, before we look at the cards, let's also talk a little bit about victory conditions. There are two different ways to play the game. There's the base default way to play the game, which we're going to play right now. And in this way, you have three different ways you can win the game. Way number one is you defeat all the enemy tanks. So if the US wipe out all the enemy tanks, game over, the US wins. Also, if you capture the enemy's base, the very final checkpoint, you win. So if the US capture this base here, they win the game. Lastly, the third way you can win is to succeed at your special top secret mission. And there are three different types that you get randomly assigned one of these at the beginning of the game. It's either kill enemy ace, capture any enemy checkpoint, destroy all enemy medium tanks. Now, if you're playing this two player, we're gonna play it solo, of course. If you're playing a two player, you don't know what your enemy's secret mission is. So you kind of got to guard against all of these three. In our game here, we're gonna play as if either side, if, as if both sides knows what the opponent's secret mission is, and therefore we can try to defend against it. The German side drew this one right here, which is kill the enemy ace. So for the US, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we keep our ace tank, which is right here, relatively safe and tidy. And then the US actually, I think this is one of the, the fortunate ones here, which is capture, capture enemy any enemy checkpoint. So that means that for the US, this very first checkpoint is now a win condition for them. And so you can see how this can create a very fast playing game. And you can probably play some of these games 10, 15 minutes or so, and sometimes even perhaps a little bit quicker, or they could get a little bit more drawn out depending upon what these secret missions are. I also think I'd like to talk right now about a second way you can play the game, which is that there is a po victory point total way to play the game. Basically, you are trying to achieve five victory points and you get victory points for achieving various things in the game. One way is like you get a two victory points. If you get three of your tanks into the other side, the opponent's side of the battlefield, you get two points, I think, for destroying the enemy heavy tank, one point for destroying the ace, you get some points for checkpoints and things like that. So you can play this game that goes to five points, which is a very different way to play. Obviously, too, you can make up your own rules here, too, right? This is a very kind of uh, modifiable system. So, if you, you know, if you don't like a certain rule, you can kind of swap it in and out. If you don't want the secret missions, you could play to just destroy the tanks or take a checkpoint. But for the sake of gameplay right now, we're going to kind of show the standard way that comes first in the rule book. So that covers the pieces, the map, the victory cards. Let's talk about the two other types of cards, and then we're going to be ready to play. Each side at the beginning of the game gets six tactics cards. And so these are tactical cards, three that are defensive oriented and three that are attack oriented. You can play one of these per turn at the start of your turn and they do various things. I won't go into detail too much on these, but some of these are pretty powerful and we're gonna be using them. So as we use them, we'll show how they work in the game. The second type of card that can be used in combat are these morale cards. And I want to talk a little bit about the morale cards as we talk about impressions. These, neither team starts the game with them, starts the battle with a morale card. You can get them in one of two ways. You can get them when you roll a six, when you're firing at an enemy tank to hit a tank. That's like the high score, best hit you can get on a tank. So if you score a six hit on a tank, you get a morale card. Likewise, if you capture an enemy checkpoint, you get, you get a morale card. These, I found, are pretty powerful, some more powerful than the others, and they do all kinds of really kind of interesting things. Like this is restore one armor token. We'll talk about what that means. Some of them are defensive, some of them are offensive. Some of them allows you to re-roll, so attacker has to re-roll to hit for a deflect. And these can be played at various times in the game, and the rulebook explains when you can play any which one of them. Now this one, airdrop in particular, I want to talk a little bit about when I offer some impressions, and we'll see if this comes up. So I'm going to reshuffle these, and that should get basically ready to start the battle. So let's get this battle started. Now at the beginning of a game you flip this initiative token and when I flip this the US won, which means that as we set up the US forces placed one of their tanks down and then the Germans placed a tank and they went back and forth until they're all placed. Uh, now it also means that the, the US goes first in their attack here. And let me just talk a little bit about kind of what I'm thinking about for strategy. Because the US drew that capture any, any, any enemy checkpoint card, this checkpoint here is US victory. The movement for some of these tanks, for, for like these medium tanks is three. So they are like three moves away from potentially getting in here if they can break apart some of this resistance. So I think as the US forces, we're gonna try to use this Pershing, our heavy tank, and one of these Shermans, and perhaps try to even push up along this side, because it looks like most of the Germans have set up over here a little bit more to the south of this forest, and they can't see through it. So we might try to flank around the side and see if we can sneak in here and get the checkpoint. The Germans have drawn the kill enemy ace one, which in the US has got this enemy kind of back from the front lines a little bit. 
could be tough to take out, so I think we're going to be a little bit more cautious to start out as the Germans. However, we might look at an opportunity to slide our Tiger tank up here, who has the ace in it, and see if we can maybe get us some board here and perhaps push an attack down here. We're also going to watch to see what happens with the morale cards, because some of those can swing a battle in a pretty, pretty wide way. So let's get started with the US turn first, and let's talk about what each turn entails. Each turn is super simple. Basically what it involves in, you get two actions. You can move and fire. And now the only thing that you can't do is the same tank can't take the same action in the same turn. So you can't move a tank twice. You can move a tank and fire the same tank. You can fire a tank, then move it. You can move two different tanks, or you can fire two different tanks, or you can move one tank and fire a different tank. The only thing you can't do is the same tank can't do the same action twice in your turn. So I think the Germans have made a mistake here by setting this martyr up here in the woods, because let's talk a little bit about how armor works. The Martyr is a very strong offensive tank, but it's only got one armor token. And the way you destroy a tank is you knock the armor off and then you hit the tank. So we need two hits, essentially, two full hits on this Martyr. There are partial hits and we'll talk about how those work as we get into it. We need two full hits to knock this Martyr out. And one thing that we can do to start here, we're going to actually play... Oops, a little bit of an earthquake there. We're going to have the US start their turn by playing Air support. Now, air support knocks a full armor token off in any one of these patterns here. So we're going to drop it right on the middle of the martyr, and we're going to use that air support token. We can only use it once in the game to knock off one of those armor tokens. So that reduces the martyr to one hit, and it expends the US air support token. Now, that's before the turn even starts. So now what we're going to try to do here is we can move one of these two tanks forward and try to take a shot at the Martyr. We know because the Martyr is in the woods, we have to get within a range of two. So we either have to bring the Sherman here or the Pershing up here. All right, so we're going to take the Pershing and pull it up here. One, two, this is our heavy tank. It's a little bit risky because it's going to expose it to fire from the German Tiger here. But I'm thinking we can almost make this one expendable and then try to sneak this sneaky fast Sherman down the side here, perhaps getting around this Tiger Panzer IV into the checkpoint to win the game. But first, we want to see if we can take out the Martyr. So the Pershing is going to fire. Now, the Pershing has a, an attack power of three, so that means we're going to roll three dice. And let's talk a little bit about what the results are. We're going to take the highest result on the die. And if it's a five, it's a full armor damage, or a six, it's a full armor damage. So all we need is one more armor damage. This kind of tank itself is the equivalent of one armor token. If it's a two, the Martyr has to retreat, and we can retreat it any way we want to. A one is a total miss. A three and a four drop partial damage on it. So if we get a three, we drop one armor, one little damage token on it. If we get a four, we drop two on it. And three of these equals a full armor token. So the Pershing is going to fire now. It's going to open up. It gets three dice and it gets at range two, so it can see into the woods. And what we're hoping for is the US is a five or a six. A six. That's excellent. Our best die roll is a six, which means that the Martyr is totally destroyed. So we blew it out with air support and the thank you. And also because of that, we got a six. We get one of these morale cards. Now this one here says sabotage, add a flame token to enemy tank. So I think a flame token basically is one of those little damage tokens. We can do this at any time. We're going to save this for a little bit, but just put it off to the side. So that completes the US turn. Let's now see what we can do as the Germans. All right, so we have a few decisions to make as the Germans. I think what we might want to do is to definitely try to take a shot at this tank that's in the open. That's a given, but we can also use one of our cards and the game plays so fast that I feel like we definitely want to do that. So we are going to counter with our own air support as the Germans and drop it on this Pershing tank, knocking off one of its three armor tokens. If we can destroy that heavy tank, that might be a big win for us there. So that's gonna remove that armor token to the Pershing and we're gonna have our Tiger start its turn by opening up on this Pershing here. So it gets three dice and it's the German ace. So we add plus one to the die rolls here. Let's see if we can get some get a six, a three, and a two. So we'll take that six, which hits and removes an armor token, and the Germans now get a morale card of their own. Let's see what we get. We get 
transport. Add three hexagons to movement. This I feel like is one of the powerful morale cards because what we might consider doing now is having one of our tanks try to make a run through the US lines to try to get to their end checkpoint. We have to cross the bridge and make it across, but it might be worth a shot here. Something to consider as the Germans to try to go on the offensive a little bit. But we still have one more move now as the Germans. Let's think about what we want them to do. I do feel like even though we've put a hurt here on this, um, I think it might be to our advantage to divert some of our forces over here to try to counter this threat. Because I think one-on-one -on -one we could lose this. They could bring the Pershing up here. I think we need to slide around a little bit here with some of our defenses. So let's pull this Panzer IV up into the woods. And then next turn we can move it up here and have a good firing arc on these units if they try to advance. Let's go to the U.S. turn. All right, I think as the U.S., we're going to still press the attack here. We're going to move this Sherman up one, two, three, and now it's in within range. Oh, wait one second, one second. Let's uh, continue on with our pressure here. We are going to bring artillery support to bear. Actually, no, we're going to do one more thing. We are going to use smoke. Smoke means the Germans cannot fire in the next turn. So we're going to use that tactics card, meaning all the Germans can do in the next turn is move. Then we're going to push up here with our Sherman. One, two, three. That's one of our moves. And we're going to have it open fire on this Panzer IV. Now this Sherman has a range of two and a firepower of two. Looking for a five or a six. Gets a five. Now that doesn't get us a morale card, but it does get the effect of knocking off one of the Panzer IV's two armor tokens. So U.S. puts a little bit more damage on there. Now we go to the German turn and they can only move. They can't use any other um, attacks in their turn here. However, they can still use one of their tactical cards. And I think what we might do here, because this unit still is somewhat of a threat to break through here. I mean, it's going to go one, one, two, three turns to get there. And we're going to have a lot of shots at it, I think. So it might be a stretch. Actually, what we're going to do here as the Germans, we're going to take our repair card, which means we can replace an armor token. And we're going to put it back on this Panzer IV to bring it back up to full strength. And we've expended our repair token. Let's go now to the U.S. turn and consider their actions. I think as the U.S., I'm not sure if this is wise, but we are going to... Push the attack. Let's go. We're going to send this Sherman into the woods here, um, and it's going to open fire on this Panzer IV. Now, wait, we can use a card here, too. Um, let's bring some artillery support to bear. We're going to bring artillery support right on this Panzer IV, knocking off its armor token, and that expends our artillery support card. Now we can move. We're going to move up into the woods and open fire on this Panzer IV. We get two dice rolls. Let's see what ha two dice. Four and a one. Okay, so we get a four is equal to two of these partial damage tokens. A three would get you one, a four gets you two. We get two of them. However, we have this sabotage morale card that we picked up, and you can use it any time. So that adds a flame token to enemy enemy tank. That's the third one, which is the equivalent of a full armor token. So we're going to expend that morale card right there, throw it into the discard pile. Two and two, we're going to take off that to add on that third one, which equals a full armor token, reducing the Panzer IV down to just its core. All right, so this Panzer IV is in trouble. Now the Panzer IV, if we didn't do that as the US, that sabotage element, we could have moved the Panzer IV back in here and it would have recovered those flame tokens. So you can repair tanks at your checkpoints. So I think using that sabotage token then, the card then made a lot of sense for the US. Let's think about what we want to do as the Germans. Right, I, I think we have to take away the threat here. Now we can move this tank back onto this defensive position here, but it's going to take two turns to get there. Instead, let's see if we can just blow this Sherman apart. So first off, let's start up with artillery support. We're going to bring artillery support on the Sherman, knocking off one of its um, our, our armor tokens. That takes care of that. And that expends the German artillery support. Now let's have this Panzer IV fire here on the Sherman. It gets two shots. It needs a five or a six to knock off an armor token. It gets a six, which is excellent. That knocks off the armor token and the six gets the Germans a morale card, which is demolish. Remove an even number to remove an armor token. Now, one of the questions I have on this, would that include the last armor token signifying the tank's body? 
and I'm not sure if that's clear. I'm going to assume it's okay. And with that in mind, we are going to use that, this card that we picked up, and this one can be used at any time. So we're gonna roll an even number to remove the last armor token, which would destroy the Sherman. So a big, a one, it doesn't work. So the Sherman avoids the demolish tactic there, and that keeps their hopes alive. But we have, we've used the artillery support for one, we fired for another, and we have one more thing that we can do, which is this Panzer IV can fire. Firing at the Sherman in the woods, gets two dice rolls. We get a six again, blowing apart the Sherman, putting a heavy dent to the US offensive there and getting the Germans another morale card. Overhaul, restore one armor token and an overhaul card. Let's see, can that be used at any time? An overhaul card can be used at any time. Let's do it. Let's put an armor token back onto this Panzer IV to keep it, get it back up to a little bit more of its original strength. So the Germans getting lucky there with some morale cards, pounding away and getting some good hits on the Sherman. Each side now has lost one tank and the American initiative here has kind of lost its steam. All right, I think the American offensive here has kind of fizzled out. And one of the things I'm concerned about as the US is this German morale card, which is add three hexagons to movement because it, I think one of these German tanks could potentially if it can go six, it can start to get behind our forces, and then it's making that end run to the base, which kind of creates all kinds of problems. So I think we have to call the breaks to our offensive as the US, and let's do a couple things. First of all, we're gonna play our repair card to put a repair token on this um, Pershing, which got hit pretty hard in the earlier part of the battle here. Then we're gonna pull the Pershing back one, two, pull it behind the building to kind of counter that end run there if we can a little bit. And then I think with the next one, we're actually just gonna pass. I mean, but theoretically we could just say we could like, we could move, you know, this tank destroyer one, two or something like that if a move is required. But we're gonna let the defense, I think it's the, the, the burden now is on the Germans for the moment anyway, or at least until we can think about how we might wanna get some of these Shermans over here. Actually, let's do that. Let's, 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 start to be a little, let's keep putting up the pressure here. We're gonna go one, two, three with this Sherman and see if we can swing around here, perhaps creating another offensive on the left-hand side. But let's see what we might wanna do as the Germans now too. So German turn, let's have, I've got an idea. Okay, so the Germans are going to do, they're gonna drop their smoke card, which means that the US can't fire in the next turn. And we're going to expend the transport which is add three hexagons to the movement. I assume it's of one tank. So we burn through that morale card. We're gonna put it right on this tank here. So we go three and three is six now, and it's gonna make its end run, dropping smoke to prevent the US from being able to fire. One, two, three, one, two, three. And it is next to this Pershing right here. Let's have it, I'm more worried about this one, to be honest, because this has a movement of three. So let's have it fire here on this one and it's got a range of two, so we can do that. Let's have it open fire. It needs a five or a six to knock off an armor token here. Gets a three and a two. So the three is the equivalent of one simple flame token. So not the greatest shooting there by the Panzer IV. And that ends the German turns. US turn is up now. Let's see how we might want to counter this threat and considering that we can't fire. So the US battlefield enveloped in smoke here means that we need to figure out a way to protect against this approaching bridge. So I think one of the things that we probably want to try to do is to get this Hellcat. Okay, here's our move. I think this will work pretty well, right? This can move three. One, two, three. Oh, we can't fire, so it doesn't matter. I was thinking we can move it here and fire, but we can't do that. We're going to move our Hellcat. Oh, we don't want to leave this checkpoint open either. It could come here and get the checkpoint. Oh, we're in all, all sorts of mess right now as the U.S., aren't we? Okay, so one, two, three. That's going to make the tank have to divert here. That's going to help us out there. And then let's go one, one, two, three to pull the Hellcat back here. I think that's the best we can do with this. And we can get the Hellcat in front of the bridge here to make the German tank have to destroy it here before it can cross the bridge because the US base is on the other side of this river here. So it has to cross that bridge. It means it's gonna have to knock out something here. But I think what we might do now though is try to divert the tank here to get the checkpoint. That would be helpful. All right, German turn. 
let's see what we're going to do. All right, I, I don't feel like we're going to be able to pull this off as a Germans, but let's give it a shot. Um, one of my thoughts was we can try to keep trying to have this Panzer IV make its end run, which is looking rather bleak, or we could actually try to blow apart this the Pershing right here and just take them on tank firepower and get this checkpoint and then maybe take out the ace. It's another thought there too. So lots of strategies that we could try to pull off here. Yeah, let's, we're going to keep the pressure up here. Let's keep going. Let's give it, see if it works. I'm just kind of trying stuff. One, two, three. The Pan Panther's going to go here and it's going to fire at the Hellcat because it might be able to destroy the Hellcat before it can block the bridge. So let's have it uh, open fire. It needs a five or six and, let's, and let's add the infantry support uh, card here. So that's the second to last German card. That adds an extra die to this attack roll. So the Panzer IV is going to roll three dice on this attack instead of two. Needs a five or a six again and knock a full armor token off. Gets a five. Excellent. So it knocks off that armor token, reducing the Hellcat to one. And that's the end of the German turn. Let's see what the U.S. can do to counter. So we got two options. We could either try to blow the Panzer IV apart. We'd have to hit it three times before it gets pied by having both of these units fire. We could have both of them try to block its path by moving up here, but that gives it a chance to blow the, the Hellcat away. We're going to have one move and one fire. Let's do this. Let's go one, two. No, it's not going to be able to stop it, is it? Because if we go back three here, this Panzer IV is still going to be able to go one, two, three. Yeah, no, we'd be able to block it. Yeah, we could get to the bridge before it does. So one, two, three, we're going to go here with the Sherman, and we're going to have the Hellcat 4. We go. We're going to have the Hellcat 4 open fire, which rolls four dice. It's our most powerful tank offensively. So with that on mind, let's see if it opens up here and gets some damage. A five. Hoping for a six there. That would have been nice. But the five does blow one tarm armor token off of the Panzer IV, reducing it to two strength. Now let's go for the Germans here. In order for this Panzer IV to get by this Sherman, which is gonna move here in the next turn, we have to destroy it because it's gonna be able to block the bridge, which means that our offense isn't going to work. But, so let's take a little bit different tack. Let's go one, two, pulling it out of range of this Sherman, blocking the house here by the, the, the Pershing over here, and let's have it try to destroy the Hellcat 4. It's going to open fire. We only have mines left, which we can't use. So with this attack, the Panzer IV can roll two dice. Gets a five, which blows apart the Hellcat. So the U.S. has lost their second tank, and that changes the battle a little bit here. The danger here now is that this Panzer IV could take this checkpoint by moving three in its next turn. So I think it's important to counter that. We are going to send our Ace Sherman. Oh, we can't go two. Oh, we got to destroy this tank. It's going to be able to get the checkpoint. And it's going to take it no matter what we do. Oh, clever Germans. Well, let's move. We got to try to take a shot at it. We're going to pull down one here and have this Sherman open fire on the Panzer IV. So it gets two shots. Let's see what we can do with it here. Five, excellent shot. Knocks an armor token off the Panzer IV, reducing it to not too much. But now it is the Germans' turn to counter. Let's have them go one, two, three, flipping this to their control and having them gain the ever valuable morale card. Conceal is subtracts one from the highest dice roll. So that's a pretty handy morale card to have. We will save that off for the side. Now moving there, we can fire, but there's nothing in range. So we could do something else with the German forces now. I think it's time to bring this um, Panzer, the, sorry, the Tiger to bear. Let's have it push up. Yeah, we're going to actually, the tank, we get, the Germans win if they can knock out the ace. So let's, bah, but if we go there, then the, Pershing can move up and try to take this checkpoint, which is the U.S. victory condition. So many different ways this can go here. Let's bring this German Panzer over here in the woods forward one. And that'll be the end of the German's turn. Let's go to the U.S. turn. I think the best thing for the U.S. to do is to take out this, because uh, they can move over here and get this other checkpoint too. So we need to take them out. We're going to go one, two, three. Open fire on the Panzer IV with two dice. And let's make certain with this one. We're going to add the infantry support, which adds an extra die. So we're going to get three dice for this attack. U.S. opening fire. They get a six, which is excellent. That destroys the Panzer IV. And 
we can get the morale card by retaking this, which would be nice. We get a morale card for, for getting that six. Anyway, we get reinforce, add a dice to your attack. So we'll save that one off to the side. And let's go to the German turn. Things have gotten decidedly bloody here. So <laughs> I think what we're gonna do is we're going to try to create a, an ace on ace battle here because the German win condition is to knock out this ace. And this Pershing is so slow that I don't think it's going to be able to get to these checkpoints before that battle could be resolved. So let's send our Tiger advancing here at a two to face off against this Sherman in the woods. Now it can't do anything yet, but it's a pretty good start to it. And let's bring forward our other Panzer IV. One, two, we'll just move it two right there to let it sit there in case other things happen. So now let's go to the U.S. turn. All right, so U.S. turn, obvious move here is we're gonna move the Sherman up two because it moves into its base, it gets to take off the flame. We recapture the checkpoint, which gives us a morale card, which is experience, reroll a dice for attack. That will be helpful, we'll store that off to the side. We have one more move as the U.S. Let us take our Pershing and see if we can send it up for the win. We're gonna move it up past this vehicle here, out the house, and we're gonna send it around and run, force it to face off against this Panzer IV. German turn. Very quickly, the Tiger's gonna come down here. One, two, ace against ace. It's gonna open fire here, which is three dice rolls, three dice, and it's plus one to the dice roll because it um, is the ace here. So we get to roll three plus adding one to it. This should be a strong attack. A six and a one is a seven, that's a six, which knocks an armor token off the US ace tank and it gives us a morale card, add one to the highest roll. So we can save that for the next one there. Now we go to the US turn. I think as the US, we're gonna do two things. We wanna get this Sherman out of the way. We don't wanna lose our ace. We're gonna have him pull back into the woods here forcing the tiger, it's gonna take a while to get there. That's gonna buy some time. Then up here on the other side, we're gonna have our Pershing slide forward to here, try to get to this checkpoint. It is one, two, three turns away. Let's see what the Germans can do to adjust for that. All right, so the Germans are going to now play the mines card, which adds two flames to an enemy tank. So we'll put two flames on the Pershing to try to just weaken it a little bit. That will, it's got to help a little bit there. Still got two armor tokens there. That's a lot. It's the last tactical card. Now we're going to open up with the Panzer IV here. It rolls two dice, and we're going to use the Sniper, which is to add one to the highest dice roll. So that gives us two dice and adding one to them here. Six. Oh, nice shot for the Germans. That takes an armor token off the Pershing, leaving it with one left, and it gets us a morale card. Airdrop. Okay. That's interesting because the airdrop is, I think, one of the more powerful cards in the game. Because what we can do now is we can take any tank and move it next to enemy, fr any friendly enemy tank. And you do that as, like, as I, th I think this is its movement. It's not as in addition to its movement. We have one move left, so let's see how we can do this because we should be able to get a tank behind the enemy lines. All right, I think this is gonna be close, but we're gonna take the airdrop card and we're gonna play it right away. We're gonna take our Panzer IV here and pull it over here via airdrop as its move. This puts it behind this Sherman and it gives it an end run across to the US base, which, let's get this stuff out of the way, which is over here. Now the question is whether this Panzer IV can get here before the Pershing can get here. Either one of these are the victory conditions. Now it goes to the US turn. Obviously, what we want to do here is get the Pershing, which is beat up and on fire, to move one hex closer to the win condition there. We're also going to see what we can do to try to slow down this Panzer IV. Now, we can't cut it off. No matter what we do, it's going to be able to get to the bridge before us. Sherman's going to fire at the Panzer, and we're going to use the uh, Reinforce, which is add a dice to your attack, and... Yeah, we'll just let that happen there. So the Sherman gets to roll three dice on its attack. Actually, and the Germans can use their card here, which is conceal. It subtra subtracts one from the highest dice roll. So let's do that. So three dice minus one. 
three, one, two is a two. A two, however, means the attacker retreats the unit in any direction it wants to, which actually is pretty bad because we can make it move there away from its destination. That's helpful now, but the US turn is over, the German turn is up, that doesn't really make a difference. So the German, this Panzer IV is gonna go one, two, three, making its end run here. Over here, we need to counter the US threat. Our Panzer IV here, over here, one. US turn, US is gonna bring the Pershing down here. Now this tank's gonna get there, so the Pershing's gonna to have to blow it apart. This might actually be the fastest way to do that, it's just to open fire. It's a math thing, isn't it? Let's check. Yeah, no, we're gonna have it open fire, because if it opens fire and it hits it, it would knock it off. That means next turn, it can hit it and move in and win the game. So it could be two turns to win. So it's gonna fire here, and the Pershing is our heavy tank. So it gets a die roll of three dice here. Let's see what happens. Ah, that's not good, because a four is two flame tokens. It needed a five or a six, because it, the German tank's gonna be able to repair it now. German turn. It moves in here and it repairs its damage. That buys it a lot of time. So instead of potentially getting destroyed, the German tank's at two strength. And if we go over here, German tank, one, two, three, racing for the bridge. All right, what do we do as the US? All right, the US can still win because it can do one shot here to knock off the armor, and the next turn if it hits. So if it hits on both turns, it can win. That's what it comes down to. Pershing's gonna fire, it gets three dice. We have no, oh, we can use this if we want to. We can use it after, which is re-roll a dice for attack. We should've used that last time. All right, let's do it now. Actually, one other thing we're gonna do while we're here, just because we can, we're gonna use the mines card to put two flame tokens on the Panzer IV over here, just because we can. There's no sense in keeping it, right? So we'll get rid of that one. All right, so now let's come back over here to our turn. We're gonna have the Pershing open fire on the Panzer IV, three dice. It needs a five or a six to have any chance to win. The Germans have absolutely no cards left. A six is excellent, blows the armor off, leaving it with one armor strength point left, and it gets a morale card, which is attacker has to reroll a hit. That might be helpful. And now we go to the German turn. Over here, our beat up Panzer IV goes one, two, three, moves one turn away from victory for the Germans, but the Germans have to decide what else to do with their tank over here. The only thing we can do is try to hit it. It's not looking pretty hopeful. We have to hope the US miss on the next turn. This Panzer IV is going to fire at the Pershing. Gets two dice rolls here. Four and a two. A four is two armor tokens, it's two, two flame tokens. So that gives it a third one, which knocks the armor off and leaves it with one more. So the Pershing is basically down to its last two fragments of an armor token, but it is still okay. And that's the end of the German turn. Now we go to the US turn. And we have this card we can use if we want to, reroll a dice for attack. That could be pretty helpful here. The shot they need, we need to blow apart this tank and then move in and the US will win. It all comes down to this. The Pershing has three dice to blow apart the Panzer IV. Germans have no cards to influence this. U.S. gets a six, blows apart the Panzer IV, gets a morale card, which it really won't use, add two hexagon to move. That would have been helpful before. In its move portion, it moves in, takes the base, and wins the game by its victory condition, capture any checkpoint. Wow, that was a long game. That's the longest one I've had. Some of them only go five minutes. Let's now, I'm gonna kind of wrap up and give some kind of general thoughts about gameplay. Some general thoughts on gameplay. Um, I think, you know, it's really important to consider what this game is trying to be. You know, it's got a small box, small footprint, easy rule set, um, some, some colorful artistic design, both on the tanks and on the maps. 
uh, a very basic, easy to learn type of mechanics system that you can pick up and you can play games fast. Now this game that we saw here actually lasted longer than any game I've played. Some of them are really fast because I think some of the morale cards um, in particular, this airdrop card, if you get that uh, in the right spot and if your opponent hasn't positioned their troops well to defend against this, you can drop a tank behind the enemy lines and have it race to its final checkpoint and end the game. So when I first started playing, I could do that pretty quickly. Likewise, the add three hexagons to movement combined with some of these mission cards can make for a really fast, like, you know, three turn type of game. And it's like, whoops, you lost. So sometimes it's really fast and sometimes it's kind of a little bit more drawn out like this. I think ultimately the way that I in, would enjoy this game the most is the victory point way where you're playing to five victory points and you've got like five or six different ways to get those victory points. I feel like that's going to give a little bit um, less of an advantage to some of those really high powered morale cards that can be really tricky to defend against. So that's one thought on that part of it. Um, but on the whole, I, I like this game a lot. I think this game could be used to introduce uh, Hex Encounters games. You've got a number of concepts here. You know, you've got range, you've got firepower, you've got movement, you've got different types of terrain. You know, it's got some really simple mechanics, but there's surprisingly quite a bit of options you can pick from, especially as you start to kind of weave in the card play. But I could see you very well using this game as a way to introduce wargaming to kids. I think you could simplify it too. You know, you can take out aces, you can take out the cards, you can take out the secret missions, you know, you can pull in and fold in all kinds of things as you want. So I think you could really go down in the age level here. It says on the box age 14 plus, but I think you could go down, you know, if you take out some of the cards or weave them in kind of slowly, I'm sure you could bring this down to level, you know, kind of eight year old or maybe even a little bit younger and introduce kids to this. You know, some of the, the basics without the card play and aces are pretty straightforward. So I think with a little bit of variety, you've got a pretty good range of kind of applications for this. You know, obviously, if you're a serious war gamer looking for a serious war game, this isn't your game, right? Because it, it greatly simplifies tank combat. It greatly simplifies the tanks and their weaponry and stuff like that, you know, and how they're matching up and stuff like that and the symmetrical forces of it. So, you know, this, this isn't your game if you're looking for a serious uh, simulation type war game. I do think there's enough kind of tactical consideration that I could see this as being kind of a, a game that you might want to get together and play casually. There is a number of kind of options for strategies, especially when you mix in some of the card play. So I feel like I'm still kind of learning how to use those well. Um, but obviously, you know, again, it is straight, straight attempting to get into that casual, easy to learn, fast playing type of war game that you can pick up, learn, and play really quickly. So as kind of an introductory game, as a casual game, I think it works really well. And I think as a game for kids, it can work really, really well. Now, I don't know, I know it's coming to Kickstarter at the end of November 2022, which is just a few days as I make this. I don't have an idea on price, but you know, given the box and given the scope and scale, I'm guessing that it's going to be a fairly affordable game. Um, there isn't, you know, a, a ton of a kind of complexity to the build here. So I think it might be something, you know, as an introductory game, when you're sometimes looking to kind of take a chance on something to see if it might work with kids or see if it might work with someone, you know, that, that price point is kind of important. So I'm curious to see how it comes out at that level. Now, again, the last thing to keep in mind that this is a prototype. So things might change, rules might change, design might change, pieces might change, cards might change. All these kinds of gameplay elements might change as the game goes from, you know, uh, this prototype version to Kickstarter and then to the final version. So be sure to check, um, you know, the Kickstarter for any notes and things that might look different from here. And the other consideration too is um, this game isn't a complicated game, but I, you know, I've kind of learned it and played it a few times now. It's very possible I've made some mistakes here. And because of that, and because of the fact that gameplay might change, you know, I wouldn't use this as kind of a tutorial to learn how to play. Uh, and the rules, I think you'll find it pretty straightforward as you look at them. There you go. Thoughts on the game? Looks like a fun game. Looks like a very casual, fast-playing game, and I'm I'm curious to see. Uh, I hope the, the Kickstarter does well. Uh, I will put a link to the Kickstarter below down in the description, and to the degree that I'm able to, I'd be happy to answer questions and uh, kind of uh, see what I could do with that. So thanks so much for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed this game, I will put a link to our Sherman Leader series, which is a tank level game uh, of, a, of a considerable more complexity and, and depth and scale than this one, you know, obviously aiming at a different thing, but I'll put a link to that ca campaign, which you may enjoy if you've enjoyed watching this one. Thanks everybody for watching.